Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to talk a little bit about firewalls and how we set these things up to keep viruses from potentially damaging your computer systems, BIOS system. So, oh wait, I think this is the wrong channel. Hang on. Okay, that looks better. Uh, hey everybody, welcome back. And today, it's been a little bit since I have done much work on the cab on Kevin C10, but today we are gonna talk about firewalls, but not what we were thinking earlier. So today is firewall day, or I could almost call this, since today is a Sunday, it is holy. And as you can see behind me, we have a lot of holes that need to be fixed. So I'm gonna jump right in the middle of it and I'm gonna get started, I'm gonna get set up. Um, I'll explain a little bit about what all we're gonna do and uh, so come along, but uh, before I do get carried away, I wanna, once again, I wanna thank everybody for tuning into this uh, video. And I thank you guys for the, for the subscriptions and the kind comments that some of you guys leave with me. So with that being said, hey, I'm gonna jump right in the middle of it and we're gonna get after this cab. Okay, I don't want to bore you guys with details, but most of you that have been following along, I've already talked about the majority of these holes. So if it's got a silver circle around it, it pretty much is gonna get some attention. So I think for the most part, I'm gonna concentrate my early efforts today, basically from this side of the, the firewall over to here. I think with uh, a, few, a, few little, a few hours or so, I can have a ton of work done over here. The, the section behind me is gonna be a little bit more detailed, so we'll we'll talk about it more as I progress into this process. So anyway, gonna get set up and I'm gonna jump right in the middle of this and start covering up some holes. Okay, as you can see, I've, I've got a pretty good chunk of this stuff already knocked out. I've been at it probably just a couple of hours. And before I move over to the passenger side, which this, this over here, there's gonna be a really large piece of metal. I'll probably end up shaping a whole new piece and doing some bead roll work over here. So this is gonna, one patch is gonna get rid of a ton of work over here. So I've got two holes here that I've got to decide whether or not I wanna keep, and we'll get to those later. 
but there are a couple of other things that I'm gonna do on this side over here. One, there's a pinch weld right here that is raised, and this pinch weld is actually on both sides of the cab. I see really no reason to keep this, so what I'm gonna end up doing is I'll cut this away, and then I'll, I'll weld these two, two seams together. The other is, I have found another section here right below the wiper motor where I've got some rust that, some rust holes that have penetrated through. So I've got a, a small patch here that I'm gonna cut out. I've, I've basically up in here where this, these two pieces of metal, the lower cowl and this upper cowl meet, it, it kind of leaves a valley and they fill that full of seam sealer back from the factory. Well, as I said in previous videos, that stuff starts to dry rot and deteriorates and then moisture gets in behind that and once that's there, you know, it just starts rusting. Now, this whole section across here, I've kind of got up in there and I've scraped away some stuff and it's a little bit rusty, but there's only a couple of sections that, that I can see that may need to be replaced. So I'm gonna knock these two sections out real quick and then uh, we'll jump over here. Another thing I may try to do is you can see where this seam is actually at. And typically, I've started doing it here. I'm probably gonna go ahead and I'm gonna blend this to where this, you don't no longer see these two pieces of metal. So anyway, I'm gonna keep going at it and uh, I'll cut in later on here in a little bit. And uh, if there's anything else I wanna need to share, then uh, we'll see you in a bit.
Okay, I've got the passenger side, or excuse me, the driver's side. For the most part, from here over is pretty well done. Um, this hole here, I went ahead and got rid of it. This hole I'm gonna leave. Uh, with the digital dash that's going into this truck, I may need a place to pass wiring through. Um, so I'm gonna leave this one. It's, it's in a hidden location, sorta, of, so you're not gonna see, it's not gonna be as visible as this one is. So anyway, I've got this set up. I've got the, the seams all blended, and I have just a little bit of mud work that'll need to be done in these areas just to kind of give that a nice smooth finish. Now, moving on to the next big phase, as you can see, I have a lot that's going on over here. One of the biggest things is this piece here, which you can see where I've got this mark, and then I'm gonna cut this out, and then I have a little bit of shaping to do with a couple of complex uh, curvatures, because it, it has two bows in it. So this spot here, is also raised so i've got some marks here i'll end up working this out if not i may end up just replacing a little larger piece here and kind of shaping it with the contour next thing i want to do is over here um, i think for the most part i'm going to end up building a new piece of metal on this side but before i get carried away with this over here I want to install the air conditioning evaporator unit because the vintage air system uses these factory holes to locate everything. So my plan is I'm gonna set up and I'm gonna mount this evaporator unit using these holes, but I'm gonna modify the bracketry to where there's not gonna be any holes through this firewall section. So that's what I'm gonna get set up to do. So I'll set cameras up on the inside and uh, we'll get this mounted and then we'll keep right on a trucking. So see you in just a bit. Okay, I've got the evaporator unit right here and I went ahead and there's a bracket that bolts onto the front side as well as the back side. Now, a minute ago, I was telling you about how this is designed to bolts that will go through the firewall and you can see these, uh, this plate is designed to fit up against the firewall. And one of the things that I was gonna tell you that I do is I try to space this plate about a half an inch off the firewall. And the reason, I'm gonna put a firewall insulation mat in there. And if I build this bracketry, I don't want it super flush up against the firewall. So I leave me some space in there for that insulation pad. So anyway, the, the way this is set up too, on this truck, and, and I'm not a huge fan of this, but they send you this plate. This plate is designed to bolt in right here. And whether or not you put it on the front side or the back side, it probably doesn't matter, but you can also see the location of the holes for the heater hoses and the evaporator, the, co the coolant lines. I don't want my hoses coming out right here. I intend on it using this space right here and my hoses will end up going behind the fender well to be somewhat hidden so this is uh if you're just doing a a replacement on a car that doesn't have air conditioning this is a great way to go they they thought way ahead they make sure they give you all the stuff but if you're doing one especially with a smooth firewall um i do them a little bit different so anyway i've got this bolted in i'm going to stick this thing up underneath the underneath the dash and uh I'm gonna get some marks located and we'll start putting in some J-nuts. Okay, real quick, one more thing that I wanna share with you that I do on this is, since this is designed to, basically the evaporator unit comes, comes from the inside of the cab and then these bolts go through the front side of the firewall since I work a lot of times by myself, as you can see, my arms aren't 12 foot long, so it makes that a little bit difficult. So what I do is I'll cut me some quarter inch all thread, and then I'll put these two pieces of all thread on here, and that will allow me to get everything started. Then I can run this evaporator unit through the firewall and then come out here and slip some nuts on it. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So got these cut. I'm gonna hang these on here. Now that I got these on here, I'll bring this inside and we'll slide this into place and that will hold it up against the firewall. 
Okay, I did all of that just so I could get up in here and mark those two holes right here. Yeah. So I'll put me a mark here and then I'll drill those holes out. And once those holes are drilled out, I'll use these threaded insert nuts. And that's what will uh, fasten the top. And then once that's done, I'll show you guys how I'll modify the back bracket. Okay, now that I have the upper brackets, um, I've got that thing set, and that, for the most part, locates this unit. You can see this unit is very solid. However, I said earlier that I didn't want the brackets to where I had to drill any holes through the front of the firewall. So what I intend on doing, and I've been able to do this on a couple of vehicles, especially like this truck, if you'll notice, it has a shelf right here. Now what I'll end up doing is I'll end up building a bracket that will bolt directly down to here and then it will go up and it will catch this uh catch the back bracket on the unit so that's what i did on the 68 camaro up there it worked rather well so the next thing i'll do i'll pull the evaporator out of the way and with having that bracket bolted onto the back of it i'll be able to pretty much set that there and then i'll modify that bracket basically it's just going to be an l that i'll bend and then we'll make it to where she just bolts right into here and I'll use those same rivet nuts to, to set that into place. So anyway, I'm gonna finish this installation and uh, we'll knock out the, uh, finish knocking out the front of this firewall. Okay, there it is. Um, got that thing made. Uh, for the most part, it's, it's just pieces of 18 gauge metal. I put a 90 in it and then drilled some holes in the feet. And then I, once again, I used thread and inserts here. <clears throat> I took it over to the sheet metal brake too and I bent this offset in it to kind of push it back in behind, so I could get it behind this bracket. But that'll allow that uh, AC unit to somewhat free sand inside the cab of this truck. And it, I've done this before, like I said, on a 68 Camaro up front, uh, and it seems to work just fine. So the next thing I'll do with this bracket, I'll throw it in my sandblaster and I'll be blast this up and give it a better coat of paint. As you can see, you'll never see this thing once this truck goes together, but that's gonna free me up to kind of jump back out on the outside and uh, finish knocking out this firewall. So we're gonna head that way next.
I put a template, as you guys saw in the in the time lapse, I put a, a template up on the, the firewall and kind of hand drew what I thought was gonna look like a pretty good panel. So I've got that transferred so far to this piece of 18 gauge. And this is cold rolled steel, so it doesn't have the mill scale on it like you would see with hot rolled metal. So my plan is, is I'm gonna try to make a positive panel. I'm gonna try to run this through my bead roller and hopefully um, without a planishing hammer and an English wheel, sometimes if you can pre-stretch this stuff as you're running it through the bead roller, it does tend to help. But I'm going to give it the old uh, college try here and uh, see what I can do without that. So once I get the panel shaped, then I'm gonna end up probably end up doing a lot of hammer and dolly work to try to get everything flattened back out. So that's what I'm gonna do next. So uh, I'll get the bead roller set up and we'll see what we can uh, make a raised panel. I've got the basic shape. Uh, as you saw, I was able to work this thing around with a bead roller. However, if you look real close, she's warped pretty good. So I think the next step for me on this one, and uh, like I said, if, if you had a planishing hammer or you could actually, I could have taken a hammer and dolly and started working this bead just a little bit before I've done it, it might have helped stress, de-stress some of this. So. I think I'm gonna get it cut down a little bit closer to the actual piece that's gonna weld in, and then I'm, I'm gonna take my stretcher and I'm gonna start working some of the corners, as well as basically I'm gonna start hammering dolly and get this thing somewhat into the shape. Um, hopefully I can get this war beads out of here. So uh, anyway, that's gonna be next, and uh, it'll be a little bit time consuming, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll film what we can, just so it doesn't get too boring, but uh, Anyway, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to get this thing shaped and uh, get it to where it's gonna fit on the firewall. Okay, after working on this panel for a little while, I think, I think I've got it flat enough that uh, I can start fitting this thing up onto the firewall now. And uh, additionally, I've 
coated the back side of it as well as the firewall. You can see I went ahead and wire brushed everything here real well. And I've got my weld, my, my weld through primer sprayed on the firewall and on the back of the panel. So I think I'm gonna start fitting that up here shortly. Another thing that I've done is I went ahead and I've got this section cut out. So I'll make this panel. I went ahead and got this area prepped. I've got my, my weld through primer here. Additionally, this spot here, I'd said earlier that the way that thing was, it kind of uh, recessed off of the firewall the way this hole was. Uh, I cut me some slices in here and I hammered and dollied this thing flat. So I'll go ahead and cut a pattern for this and a patch panel and we'll get this welded in. Then I'm gonna start fitting the uh, fitting this new raised panel up onto the firewall. So we'll get it fit and I'll start getting it tacked up and get it put into place. Okay, I got this thing tacked and, and fit into place. And I didn't really film a whole lot of this because I just I just felt like it was just, it's repetitious. So uh, I've spent a little bit more time and I've, I've got quite a few tacks and I've got a, quite a few areas that I, I have already started to blend these. And you know, the process is just basically gonna be just keep welding slowly throughout and work these welds down and and repeat so didn't want to bore you guys with a whole lot of that uh, but anyway also on the center of the the center of the cab right here i've got these two seams i already got these blended in so the next thing i need to do is i'll i'll end up i'll fit these two patch panels together and i'll get these welded in so I'm gonna do that and uh, once I'm done, I, I don't know how much more I'll actually show on camera because like I said, it's, you know, you guys have seen the process. I make a pattern, I, I, I metal work it just a little bit. And uh, for that, after that, it's pretty much just tack welded in and grind it off. So I think once I'm done, I'll come back and we'll, I'll show you guys the, the, the finished product with this dash all the metal work done, and I may go ahead and start doing a little bit of the mud and the field work on some of this too. So anyway, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to finish this up and once I'm done, I will, uh, I'll come back and I'll show you guys what it's gonna look like. Okay, I'm working on the last piece of the firewall. And like I said earlier, I didn't want to film uh, a lot of the weld and grinding because it's, it's just repetitive. So anyway um so i'm in the process of making the last piece and as you can see i was talking about this thing having a couple of curves in it so it's curved this way as well as this way so what i've done is i've started with just a piece of flat metal and i've ran it through this roller multiple times to get my curve this direction and now i'm shrinking the edges to pull in so i can get this road this curve in it so I'm gonna keep working this. Uh, I may end up having to uh, to use a couple of my forming rolls and uh, and some hammer and dolly to finish getting this because as I was shrinking this section here, it actually opened this this 
flatten this back out, so I need to kind of roll this back. So if I had an English wheel, this would be a, a no-brainer. I could actually roll this through an English wheel and it'd put both curves in it for me. So uh, eventually I will own that stuff. So anyway, I'm gonna continue forming this and then we'll weld this piece in and then I will I will basically, I'll, I'll show you guys all the work that's been done on this thing because I got that panel in and I added an extra, uh, I'd added an extra, uh, piece of a detail in this that I think is going to look pretty cool with, with the finished product. So anyway, I'll keep working this out and we'll get this tacked in. Okay, that's gonna wrap up the firewall. I, I feel like I've done about as much to this thing as I can. So to uh, put this into perspective so you can kind of understand what restoration costs and why it costs so much to, to restore a vehicle, this is probably gonna end up being roughly a 30, 35 minute video. And all together on this firewall, all just the metal work, I have between 25 and 30 hours worth of work just in what I've shown you today on the camera. So, uh, like I said, that'll give you a, just kind of an idea of, of what we go through. Plus, there's plenty more metal work, as you guys saw in previous videos, for other repair, and we'll get to that. But this, I wanted to show you guys this, because I had, I had talked about this earlier. One, this piece right here really kind of kind of tested me as far as the shaping aspect goes. and this uh i will i will get better tooling so i can actually make this curve but here's what i was talking about where that water and how those two pieces of metal how all that moisture sits up behind these two panels and those ended up rusting completely through this spot was by far the worst spot on the whole cowl and, and firewall section so anyway uh I'm gonna grab the camera and I'm gonna do a pan around on the on the firewall and show you the uh, the work that's been done. And after I'm done with that, I'm gonna close this one out. And uh, so I'm gonna grab the camera and I'm gonna let you guys show. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I've done here. 
Okay, we may as well start uh, in the same place that the video does, which is on the driver's side. So, <clears throat> got rid of a lot of holes. You can see there are no more circles uh, in silver marking. And I got rid of all the holes that was here. Uh, I've blended I've blended this seam. And uh, like I said, we'll end up doing just a little bit of mud work in this area. <clears throat> I got rid of this seam and made it smooth these two pieces out made them one instead of and got rid of that ugly hideous looking pinch weld so uh we had a patch here to fix which that's done so moving right across the uh the center we i did the same thing here i've blended uh i've carried the blend across uh to through this patch panel and as well as through here now you see these these craters i call these craters um i could fill those with weld but i will tell you Whenever you start welding on these, these are factory pinch welds, and somehow those welds will trap galvanizing, and you start welding these, and they'll they'll splatter and pop. So these may end up. There's going to be a light coat of uh, body filler in this anyway. So uh, anyway, we'll we will uh, dress that out as we uh, get to it. So the next thing, as you see, is the 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 panel, and this is what I ended up adding. And honestly, I feel really really comfortable about this. I feel really good because the way this thing, the way I was able to get this blended in, but this is the, uh, this will end up, I'll drill these holes out and I'll put grommets in here. And this is where my, my hoses will pass through for the AC unit on the inside. But I am extremely pleased, uh, with this section of the firewall. It, it, it welded in pretty flat and, uh, like I said, it's, uh, I think it's going to give the truck kind of a neat feature. Um, I know Kevin, he's pretty, pretty excited to see that work. So anyway, uh, as usual, I want to thank everybody for watching this video. Um, once again, thank you for the, the subscriptions and the people that follow me. And, uh, anyway, I'm going to close this out. And I, uh, as usual, I, I can't thank you guys enough for watching this and, once again, I will look to see you on the next part. It'll either be Kevin's truck or it'll be the Camaro. So we'll see you then. Thanks for watching.